Hello, it's Marco here from Markham 3D, and today I'm going to be showing you Character Creator 3 by Reillusion. Now, I use Character Creator 3 a lot because I hate creating characters. With Character Creator 3, I can spin one up within like 5-10 minutes. What we'll do is once we've created a character, we'll bring it over into Blender. Now, I like to sometimes re-rig the character with Auto Rig Pro, just so I've got all the controls and all, so on and so forth. And then from there, at the end of the video, I'll show you a little bit of the animations tool. Now, if you do want to pick up Character Creator 3, I do have an affiliate link down the bottom if you want to support the channel. Please make sure you subscribe. I am releasing short films using the Reillusion Suite quite a bit, and it really helps me out to continue on doing these things. So, let's get into it, and we'll go from there. So here I've loaded up one of the default projects and I'm just going to quickly show you around what Character Creator 3 can do. So for instance, if I come up here into the clothing, we can expand shirts, essential clothing, and we can give him a top. Let's keep the cloth shape. Okay. And now we can see that he's wearing a shirt. Now we've got a little bit of the belt poking through. Now that's a whole separate video and there's going to be a link in the description on how you can resolve those issues. But I kind of just want to move forward with this. And so we've got a wide range of clothing to choose from. So for instance, we can give him hot pants if we really wanted to. And we'll delete his current pants by double clicking and delete. Look at those legs. <laughs> Might actually put some pants back on him. But also we've got a lot of other features we can do. So for instance, if I select the character, come up here into the top right hand corner and go to morphs, we've got a whole, we've got a massive selection of morphs we can change. So for instance, I could increase the arm. We can actually change the arm lengths. We can even change the types of shapes. Um, so we can give him a stronger arm. So he's you know, beefing up even more. And we can give him skinnier arms like that. Now there is a massive wide range of the body, but let's actually go in and check out the head. So here we've got our heads and over here, we've got a whole bunch of presets that Reillusion have already created. So for instance, we can actually merge two different heads together. So this one, CC3DH male head. If I turn the slider up, we can see how it combines the two heads. We can come in and specifically change certain aspects of this head. So for instance, I'm going to increase the nose. Let's go shape. We can make the nose, the nose smaller by pinching it a little bit. Let's come down into the nostrils. And what we can do is we can give him just some bigger nostrils and we can change the nostril height. So maybe we can bring it up a little bit and then we can do nostril width just to make them a little bit wider. There are just so many settings that you can go in and change. So change the chin depth, uh, give it a little bit smaller a chin bit of an underbite. We can come in and change the jaw size, you know, give him a little bit of a weaker jawline. And you can see how much we've changed the face. Now, for instance, I want to change the hair. I'm not a big fan of that hair. Let's jump into our meshes and then click on hair. I'm going to give him a bit of a man bun. Let's just change him around. Look at that. Look how it just changes features. He's got a bit of an overbite now as well. So I've really brought that jaw back. And as well, a really cool feature in Character Creator 3.3 is if we come up into the makeup area, click on miscellaneous, and then we can actually come in and add some, you know, different paints. We can even come in and change his beard. What I might do just for funsies is let's give him a bit of a dirty face. So I'm just going to double click on that. And now I can see that that dirt texture is on his face. That looks absolutely amazing. We can even come into like the skin details and we've even got like, look at this, you can change the feet. That's crazy. Elbow decals, Reillusion have really gone all out in creating this. Now let's export this character. So I'm gonna go file, export, FBX clothed character. So our tool preset will obviously be Blender. We're just going to export the mesh, not the mesh in motion, just mesh. Now embedded textures, I like to have disabled and the default pose we will keep as the A pose because if we leave it as a T pose, what actually happens is it sets the character's rig to the T pose, not the mesh. So if we were to apply another rig to the mesh, it will actually be sitting in the wrong location. So let's go A pose, export, CC3 Blender. I'm just resaving over it, save. Yes, please. And there we've exported it. Now let's open up Blender. And at the moment I'm on 2.83.1. Let's select the default cube and delete that default cube. Let's come up into the top and select file, import, FBX. Let's go to the location of our folder. And all I'm gonna do is just double click on it. And there's our character now in Blender. So first off, let's go about setting up the material. So I'm just gonna go into the viewport shading. We're currently in Eevee. Now it's a little bit off, but that's fine. We just need to fix up these textures a bit. So let's start off with the top of the head. So I'm gonna select the hair. And if we come into materials, we can see we've got two materials. With the scalp, I'm gonna come down into the bottom here and select our blend mode from opaque to alpha blend and let's turn on back face culling. Let's come back up to the top and select our high ponytail material back down 
and this one's gonna be alpha hashed. If we go alpha blend, we can see it kind of goes a little bit see-through. Let's come down to the bottom and we will go alpha blend again, but we're gonna turn off back face culling. There we go, that's looking really nice. From here, let's select our head and I'm just gonna start off by doing the eyelashes and let's come down. Once again, let's do alpha blend back face culling. Um, we've got some eyeballs in here, or sorry, it's kind of like eye occlusion. So it goes in front of the eyeball. We've got two materials. So once again, we're gonna do alpha blend back face culling. Let's select out the other material, alpha blend back face culling. And we've got one little thing in here as well. There we go, which is called the tear line. So once again, we go into alpha blend back face culling. Let's go left, blend mode, alpha blend, back face culling. While we're here, let's work on this material. So at the top, I'm gonna to go shading and change it from material to our EV renderer. I'm gonna change our specularity to 0 0.001 and our transmission to 0.1. And so what that's gonna do is kind of just make it a little bit watery and a little bit teary. Let's go back into our material, select our other tier line and we'll do the same 0 0.1, 0 0.001 and our transmission as 0.1. Okay, now let's actually work on our head material. So let's select our body. Let's come to the top and select head. So at the moment, all we've got plugged in is our normal map down here and our diffuse up here. What we're gonna add in to start off with is, let's give it some subsurf. And so I'm gonna give it just the ever so slightest bit. I'm gonna go 0 0.005 and we'll make the subsurf a little bit pinky color, like so. Let's just quickly go up to the render settings and what I normally like to do is turn on screen space reflections and we'll add in our refraction. And I do like to turn on the ambient occlusion as well. Let's go back into material. So down here, I'm gonna shift A and I'm gonna click search, type in image, and let's open up our image texture. From here, I'm gonna press open and we're gonna find our, our specular texture map. So go to where we saved our character. I'm gonna click on textures, CC3 Blender, which is what the what we called it from Reillusion. CC3 Blender again, the body, the head, and our specular map. Let's put our color into specular and we'll change that to non-color. You can see it does look fairly shiny, but we'll fix that up in a sec. I'm just gonna select this texture, Shift D to duplicate and bring that down. Let's click the folder here. Let's click the folder and we'll open up our roughness and we'll throw that into our roughness and we can see that it goes full gloss. Let's just change that to non-color data as well. Let's go shift A search and I'm gonna type in invert. There we go. Place one there, shift D and place one in here. There we go, so that's looking, so that's looking pretty good right there. There, yeah, that's looking fantastic. And so if I zoom in here, we can see the difference between our head material and our body material. Now this line here is because of our subsurf scattering. So let me just quickly do the chest and the arms. So that's looking pretty good. We've got one material to add. So I'm going to duplicate our specularity map, open up our ambient occlusion. Let's now shift A, search our mix RGB, and we'll plop that one in there, color, goes into there. sRGB, we'll change that to non-color data as well. And we'll change the mix to multiply. And that's just giving us a little bit of extra ambient occlusion in there. So now let's come in and we can see the difference between the head and the body. So what I'm gonna do is quickly set up this materials for the body and the arm. There we go, we can see that he's turned out amazing. Now let's go about rigging the character in Auto Rig Pro. So I'm gonna click on solid mode, Let's just go into front facing. What I'm gonna do is start off by selecting the armature and select the armature down here. Viewport display and I want it to be in front. So we're gonna use this armature here as a reference point or as a guide. So now when we come in and select all our meshes, I'm gonna press N to bring up the side panel. Now before we start the rigging process, what we need to do is actually lock down all our vertex groups. Now this is most important for our head and for our eyes as well. This is because these bones here control parts of the face. So for instance, the eye bones will control the direction of the eyes and this bone in here, I believe, which is the jawbone, will control the mouth opening up and down. So we need to keep those bones there if we want to animate the face. So let's go back into object mode. I'm gonna start off at the top. So I'm gonna select the hair. In our vertex group panel, I'm gonna press the drop down and enable lock all. 
So now we've got all padlocks here. Let's press H to hide. And then I'm gonna go through the whole body and just lock all the vertex groups just in case we need to come back and reference them at any point. And there we go. So now we've got all those vertex groups locked. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all our mesh, press N to bring up the side panel and open up Auto Rig Pro. Let's click the Auto Rig Pro Smart and get selected objects. From here, our armature has disappeared, but if we come up here to the top right, press the little hide in viewport display, and now we can see it. Let's start zooming in. I'm gonna press add neck. So we'll put that on our neck bone. Add chin, we will guesstimate. Add shoulder, we will put here. Add wrist fairly straightforward, root spine, and our ankles. There we go, just down here. From here, I'm gonna press go, and what this will do is it'll create the rig. So I can see that it's not too bad. I'm gonna press numpad three and just kind of align everything up with how it was before. Now, something very important to keep in mind is that this leg, this line in the upper leg and the lower leg, it's not best to have a straight line, but to have it actually pointing a little bit forward. So for instance, this would be bad because what actually might happen is it might actually put the knee bone all the way back here. So the knee would be bending the wrong way. So what I'm gonna do is actually just move it forward a smidgen, just so we have that. Um, let's have a look. Is this bone down here in the right location? Yep, that looks fine to me. It's got a very slight bend forward. That's good. Just like up here as well, we've got the same issue. So I'm gonna bring the shoulder forward a little bit, bring the elbow to about here-ish, and our hands look fine. So that there is looking pretty good. So we do have that bend still. It's not a straight line. I think it should be fine. So let's go tab into object mode, numpad one to go in front view. What I'm gonna do from here is press match to rig. And we can see that the leg seems very straight, but the arm isn't. So for instance, we can see that it's kind of like on an angle. We kind of want those boxes to be straight because now if I were to rotate this arm, well, it's actually rotating not too bad, but we can see that the hand, yeah, it's in a completely different uh, direction. So it's actually not bending the right way. So let's control Z and undo that. What we can do is edit reference bones. And I believe that this isn't in line. So I'm gonna bring that down like so. And so now we've got a straight line through here. So let's check how that goes. Tab into object mode and match to rig. And we can see how much that box has already changed. That's looking a lot better. What I actually might do is, uh, which one's the backside? So maybe what we'll do is bring down that elbow a little bit more. Yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. So now if I were to rotate, whoops, we can see that's looking much, much better. So from here, we go into object mode. Let's select our mesh, select our auto rig pro armature last. From here, we go to skin and then we click bind. And there we go, our character's now being rigged. So if we select our rig, click pose mode. So if we move the arm, we can see, we see a little bit of mesh issues, but we'll come back and we'll fix that in a sec. What we need to do is actually set up these head bones so they come into this rig as well. This is so we can control the face through one rig. So what I'm gonna do is go into object mode, select our original armature. Let's go into edit mode. What I'm gonna do now is just select all our bones that we don't need, which is everything on the lower body or even the upper body and the two neck bones we no longer need. So let's delete those bones back into object mode. We have our kind of like our head set up. I'm gonna shift the left click on our rig and then press control J to join. So now if we go into wireframe, we can see that our rig is just in here. Let's now go into edit mode. There is a tiny little bone in here. So that's the facial bone. That is the head bone. So we can see that we've selected it up here, CC base head. From here, we go into the bone settings, relations, and our parent is going to be the C underscore head dot X bone. So that means now when we go into pose mode, if I move the head around, we can see that the whole facial bone is moving around as well, which is excellent. I can come into here and select, that's the jaw root bone, which is what we want, I think. We can see that he talks, the tongue moves, and 
the teeth move as well, which is what we're after. Isn't that right? Sure is. <laughs> now let's fix up this weight painting that we've issued that we've got at the top here. So if I rotate Z, so if I, sorry, if I just rotate this arm around, we can see that it's kind of stuck to this upper arm area. So what we can do is go into object mode. Let's select our hair. I'm going to come over into the vertex groups. Now let's work out what part of the hair is attached to what vertex group. So if I just sort by name, bring it all the way to the top, click on arm stretch. I'm going to go from object mode to weight paint. And then I'm just going to start pressing down. And there we go. We can already see what a group is affecting this hair. So we can see that it's a C underscore twist offset L. So let's go from weight paint mode to edit mode. I'm going to select everything and then click remove. And now that's fixed up that issue. So let's go back into object mode and we can select our rig pose, rotate Z, and we can see that nothing else is really coming with it. Well, nothing else is coming with it, which is what we want. Brilliant. Now, very briefly, I'm going to show you how to do some very basic animation. So I'm just going to select everything. Alt R to reset the rotation. Alt G to reset the location. From here, let's just pose him in a kind of very neutral pose. How do we want him? There we go. Just let him stand like that. And then I might bring him down like so. And then it's kind of like as if he's ready to whoops pounce or something so there we go what i can do now is i can go to frame 10 for instance i'm going to select all the bones and i'm going to press i to set a keyframe and what i'm just going to do is put in location rotation and scale and then let's say at frame 30 i want him to be in a different pose and I want to record these actions. I can press the record button down here and I can kind of just move him into position. And then with that record button, everything I just moved will get recorded. And so I can kind of scrub between both sides, between the two keyframes. And so obviously this is how you would go about animating a lot more keyframes and so on and so forth. But the cool thing as well is you can actually do this with the face. So for instance, if I go to frame, let's just say 30, I can click on the head and then we can actually move this around so we can give him a smile. Well, actually we can start off with a neutral face and I want to give him a left smile. So I'm going to right click insert keyframe. So at the moment that's on zero and at about frame 10, it's going to give me a nice big smile right click insert keyframe and so going between those two there we can see what well, he gives a little bit of a smile and also we can come up and probably give another one as well i don't know let's go mouth pucker let's go right click insert keyframe on 30 go to 40 <laughs> come back over into here insert keyframe <laughs> We've got a bit of a bad defamation in there. A bit of a duck face. <laughs> so let's maybe get rid of that smile. Right click, replace keyframe. And so now he's, you know, blowing a little bit of a kiss. So if you like this video, please make sure you hit the like button to help out Reillusion. And if you want more tutorials from a variety of tutors, please make sure you hit the subscribe button as there is new content constantly coming out.